All right, in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how you can uh, have a wireless LED light system for your GoPro or DSLR cameras, uh, trail cameras, for shooting nighttime video. And what you're going to need is a Pixel Pawn wireless flash trigger. The one I'm using is model TF-361. That's for Canon cameras, but uh, there's also some for Nikon and other cameras like a TF-362, TF-363. Um, I believe the hack on all of those is going to be exactly the same. The only difference is the hot shoe configuration, you know, on your uh, transmitter um, and for the on the uh, receiver uh, for the particular camera that it's used for. In the kit, you're going to get your um, transmitter unit and your receiver unit and it's also going to come with about four different cables uh, connecting cables and the one that you're going to need out of the kit is going to be this one that has a uh, right angle plug on it that will plug into the receiver okay and what you're going to need to do is go ahead and on the uh, end that's got the straight jack on it or straight plug just uh, clip that off get rid of that and then trim this back to expose the wires that are inside and there's going to be three wires in here okay and on this jack we're going to need the green wire and the blue wire the red one you can discard it all right and we're going to go ahead and strip off a little bit of this insulation on the green wire and on the blue wire the green wire is going to be your positive and the blue wire is going to be negative or ground and these will get connected to a relay board uh, that's part of the unit that makes this all work so and just to verify that you have the correct wires uh, you can use a multimeter set to continuity and uh, test the blue wire and that should uh, correspond to the base of this jack okay and then the green wire should correspond to the middle section of the jack all right so I'm gonna set this to the side for now and uh, the receiver unit is powered uh, internally by two AAA batteries but that's not going to last you long enough uh, out in the field because this receiver stays continuously powered up so what we're going to do is inside where the batteries uh, would connect uh, on, on this side here this spring we're going to connect a wire for our, our negative side of the battery and then on the other side you solder wire to there for your positive side of the battery and we're going to be running an external power source and uh, your external power source needs to be at least um, four AA batteries uh, which would be two batteries in um, a holder that would hold two batteries such as this one and you would need two of these and wire those in parallel which would be uh, ground to ground and positive to positive okay and that's going to maintain your voltage at three volts but it's going to give you more uh, milliamp hours to keep it running longer in the field you could also use um, c cell batteries or d cell batteries you know depending on what size build case you put in your light on and um, how many batteries you can accommodate in that in that case uh, but the first thing I'm going to do, and I've already pre-drilled a hole on the side here so that we can exit our wires um, out, but I'm going to go ahead and take this um, apart because I like to remove the uh, tripod mounting base here just to give this a little thinner profile in the build case 
and I usually, um, what I've done with mine is once I have the battery cover back on it, then I'll put uh, some Velcro here, and um, that way I can stick this down inside my case. You know, good. You can mount yours however you want to. So I'm going to take out this uh, screw that right here on this in the center, and then there's a couple of screws in the corner up here that we need to remove. Get down in there and get that out. Get the one on the other side. Okay. And that's going to allow us to open this up. Now this is really a little bit hard to get open. So you have to kind of work with it, pry it open. There, I've got that up loose. All right, so I'm gonna, like I said I'm gonna be getting rid of uh, this mounting plate here. So you, once you've got that open, there's four screws there that you can uh, take out. screw to come out for me. Alright, so that's eliminated that mounting pl plate that was on the bottom. So now you can just put this back together. All your screws back in it. All right, so I'm going. Try to pull this spring out on the positive side. See if I can get in there and pull that out a little bit so it make it easier to solder some wires to it. Alright, so from there just take a little soldering paste. And put some on each of the springs. This will just make it easier for your solder to stick to the springs. Get some solder on your iron tip. So you can get in here and get that to stick. Got the positive side. some on the negative side so I'm gonna go ahead and get my wire soldered on off camera and uh, then come back to that all right so I've got my external power wires soldered on as you can see and I've got them ran through the uh, hole that I drilled in the side over here so at this point we're through with the hack on this you can just go ahead and stick your battery cover back on it and I've also went ahead and prepared the cable I cut off the red wire that we don't need and I pretend the uh, green and blue wires and like I said that will just plug into the side on this receiver unit. Um, one thing I'm going to go ahead and mention so I won't forget it later is whenever you set this up out in the field 
in order for this to work you have got to turn on this switch right here to the on position um, so just whenever you go set up your camera remember that inside your light case you have to turn on this receiver unit and then uh, whenever you bring it in at the end of the season or whatever whenever you're going to put it away just remember to turn this back off and that way it doesn't continuously drain your batteries that are inside your build case all right so moving on to our transmitter the transmitter comes uh, powered with a three volt coin cell battery and we're not going to be using that either because we're going to power this with the same four and a half volt power supply that we use for the safari camera controller so just uh, before you take this battery out one thing you can do is go ahead and power this on and use the uh, on off button down here power it on and you need to adjust this uh, over here right above the on off switch uh, so that the LED next to the letter B is lit up so just press your on off button until it lights up that LED uh, next to B and that's the way we need this set up so that it will operate out in the uh, field the way we want it to so now that that's set up we can go ahead and remove that coin cell battery put that cover back on also I'm going to re be removing the hot shoe on this one also uh, just makes it easier uh, to have a slimmer profile to mount it inside your build case somewhere so let's remove the uh, four screws and on this we're going to have to have five wires coming out of here two for our external power supply and then three for other functions one wire is going to be the positive side of our on off switch here and then we're also going to have a common or a ground wire and then we're going to need a, a wire for the uh, button up here for full press and that's what will transmit a signal to our receiver so that a light will come on all right so now we've got those screws out just take this apart and take that board out of there and you can just go ahead and clip off these wires here you clip them or desolder them whichever just going to clip those off okay and then we're going to remove the screws for that hot shoe mount so this will just give you a slimmer profile in your build case without that being in the way since it's since it's not needed there are all the pins and springs that are in there two other screws that we need to remove and that takes care of that now <coughs> excuse me now I'm going to show you where you need to uh, solder wires on in here transmitter the hack locations uh, that we're going to need is for our external power is this little copper pad right above this uh, capacitor 
you can use that for your battery negative and also for our common wire that we're going to solder on and uh, I'm just going to put a little soldering flux or solder paste on that just put you a little bit on that copper pad and then get some solder on your iron tip and touch that to that spot and that will make a solder pad there that make it easier for your wires to solder to okay now for our external battery positive this trace that runs right here under our activation button it runs under there and up along this side so anywhere on that trace you need to take a little knife or something to scrape off this masking that's over that copper pad just in a small area you don't want to cut through that trace but just scrape the masking off until you get down to clean copper and once you've got down to clean copper once again take a little soldering paste soldering flux put on that spot that you just cleaned Get some solder on your iron. Touch it to that location and it'll make you a little spot that you can solder your battery positive wire to. Alright, so from there on this uh, activation button up top, there's two different ways you can do this. You can solder two wires on it or a single wire like I'm going to do. If you're going to use two wires, you're going to need to solder a wire to the top left contact up here, this top left corner, and then on the bottom right corner. And then which, if you solder on two wires, then when you bring those out, you could uh, join those two together. Okay, But I'm just going to use a single wire, and I'll just uh, solder from one spot around to the other and connect those together there and I only got one wire coming out. Now for your on and off button which is this one down here you're going to need to solder a wire to this bottom right corner. All right. And same concept here to solder your wires on take a little bit of soldering paste or flux whatever you want to call it and put just a little bit on each of those locations that we need to solder a wire to and then get a little bit of solder on your iron tip and touch it to those locations and it makes a little solder pad and it's easier for you to get your wire soldered on so I'm going to go ahead and uh, get my wire soldered on then I'll come back and show you the final result alright so I've got all my wire soldered on I'm just going to try to show you that on the uh, activation button up top I just uh, used a single yellow wire and I soldered it to the bottom right and then wrapped it around and soldered it to the top left up here. And you've got to be careful here whenever you solder those this wire on that you don't want to bridge your wire to the metal that encases the uh, button because you don't want to short that out. If you do it's not going to work properly for you. Alright so I've got that wire soldered on. I also have my power wire down here on this button soldered to the bottom right and uh, then I've got my battery positive wire soldered on and I've also got my battery negative and my common wire soldered to this spot right here okay so I'm just gonna route all my wires up and uh, route them out this right side here and on the uh, housing I just uh, notched out an area right here that will accommodate uh, my wires going out. So I'll flip this back over and lay it down in there. And get all my wires positioned where they're going to come out at. And then I can put my back back on there, screw it in place. So I'm going to do that. Then I'm going to come back and I'll show you my GoPro build with the uh, transmitter and receiver 
and uh, in, in the light case, you know, and everything, and show you how all that works. All right, so now I'm going to show you uh, my complete setup, my little GoPro build, uh, which is here inside the case. Let's see if I can get this all up here and show you. Uh, got my GoPro mounted up top and that connects uh, uses a bus port connector plugs into the back of the camera and uh, that gets connected to the uh, Safari camera control board to activate the uh, power mode button I have the camera set to one mo uh, one button operation so whenever that button is pressed it comes on and automatically starts taking video all right, then we have our Safari camera control board with a MOSFET backpacker. I've got three AA batteries in the bottom. That powers the Safari camera controller, and that also powers our wireless transmitter over here. And then I've got three AA batteries on this side that uh, give me extra um, power for my camera to keep it running longer in the field. All right, but to wire up your transmitter, what you're going to need to do is uh, on the Safari camera controller where the uh, battery power connects your ground and your power locations. Take the external wires, battery power wires that we soldered on uh, to our transmitter and connect those in the same screw terminals that your 4.5 volts uh, that power the Safari board go. So you're going to have uh, your ground wire from transmitter and the ground wire from the batteries down here going into the bottom screw terminal and then your positive from your external uh, battery supply for the transmitter and the battery holder down here is going to connect to the next screw terminal up which is power okay and that provides power to the transmitter at all times so I'm going to go ahead and power mine on and it's I've already got it set to be uh, but you can just toggle through that and set it to what uh, we need it for as on B. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and, and hold that button and power it back off. So that's uh, one thing you need to do when you set this up out in the field or when you first hook your transmitter up in here is make sure that your transmitter is uh, set for B. All right, then the other three wires that come out of the transmitter go to the MOSFET backpacker. The uh, wire that comes from our on and off button on the transmitter connects to this top screw terminal which is uh, marked as F1. Then the ground wire that are common would connect to the next terminal down which is F1C or you could connect it to the bottom one which is F2C. Either one of those locations will work. Then the wire that we had coming off of our uh, activation button up here would connect to terminal F2. Alright, so that's all the uh, wiring that's needed for our transmitter to work. Okay, move this out of the way for just a second and I'm going to show you my light. Now I'm using a 18 watt. 12 volt light and you could also use 36 watt lights um, and you're not limited to just one light you can use um, you know as many lights with your setup as you want to um, you can one two three four you know whatever you want to use only thing is you've got to have one of these receivers for each light that you have and you're also going to need a relay board, which is up here. Now, I made this one up myself. <coughs> and I'm also having some uh, little printed circuit boards made up that um, I'll put the relay on. And it will have a uh, six-pole screw terminal over here where all the wiring for everything would connect. And it will be labeled. Uh, where all those wires go and I'll also send out instructions with it uh, telling you where all the wires connect but um, I'm operating this light since it's an 18 watt 12 volt light I'm using four 
18650 batteries, which gives me a, roughly about 16 volts when they're fully charged to uh, power my light. And down in the bottom here, I have uh, four double A's. I got two in this holder, two in this holder, and those are wire parallel. That gets uh, soldered directly to the power wires for our tr receiver over here. Okay. And um, as I said, when you set this up out in the field, you need to be sure that you turn this switch to the on position, okay? And you'll notice a little LED right up here in the top will start blinking when that's powered up. All right, for the rest of our wiring, we had the uh, green wire and the blue wire coming off of uh, this cable that plugs into the side of our receiver. Those get connected to... Uh, the screw terminal up here, you're also going to have your uh, positive and negative from your power source for your light that's going to get connected into here. And, um, <coughs> excuse me, and then you're also going to have your uh, positive and negative wires for the light itself that connect into the uh, screw terminals up there. Like I said, and I'll provide uh, instructions or directions on how to wire that up and the board will, will be labeled so I've already got my receiver powered on go ahead and close this light case up I'll try to set it up back here so that you can actually see that it comes on and get my GoPro case up here now when I first turn on the Safari board it runs through a portion of the program that uh, will turn on the transmitter. It'll give a press of that activation button. That will send a signal to our light to come on. And that uh, uh, runs for about 8 to 10 seconds at the beginning of the program. So uh, I'm going to turn off my overhead light. Go ahead and turn our toggle switch on for the Safari board. Alright, so now our light is on. It will stay on for, like I said, 8 to 10 seconds. Now let's back off. And the program is powering off our transmitter because we don't need it to be powered up continuously. Now the uh, Safari camera controller is going through a walk test, which lasts for approximately 30 seconds. And once that walk test is over, it will be ready to start shooting video and uh, turn on the lights at night during the daytime it would not turn the light on so I'm going to go ahead and let that go through walk test now, I don't have my camera connected to the bus port uh, right now so I don't want my camera coming on this is just for demonstration purposes walk test is ended I'm going to wave my hand in front of the PR to activate motion all right, the board thinks it's night time, so the camera would now be on shooting video, and our light is on. Uh, in my programming, I have it set up to where the camera will come on and uh, actually start recording about two seconds before that light comes on. Uh, but in my program, uh, in trail mode, I've got it to where it will run uh, video for about a minute nine or a minute to ten seconds the light will stay on the entire time and then if there's further motion um, the sequence will start over again in theater mode I have it set to uh, only shoot 30 second videos so I'm gonna go ahead and let that run through this uh, first video sequence all right, so our first video would have ended, the camera would shut off, the light is off, and then if we had further motion detection, you know, another activation, the whole sequence starts over again. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and cut that light off, kill power to the Safari board. Now, one thing that I've noticed and uh, Dan Potter's noticed also is um, whenever you kill power to the safari board most of the time it's going to activate your camera to come on and start shooting video so just be aware of that you would actually have to 
manually stop the video on your camera all right and then uh, once you set everything back up and turn the safari board back on um, everything would operate normally as it should I'm trying to think if there's anything else i need to tell you guys about uh, like I said, you can use 18 watt lights or 36 watt lights. Uh, if you're going to use 36 watt lights, you're definitely going to need a better power source than those 18650 batteries. Um, something like a 12 volt SLA, 5 amp hour or more, um, that, will, that should give you ample power for a 36 watt light. Okay, and uh, like I said, you can use uh, as many lights with this setup as you want to. Uh, all of the receivers uh, will be activated by this single transmitter that we have in our camera build. Um, I think that Dan's tested this out to about 40 feet, you know, having this uh, light set up at 40 feet uh, from the camera case, and it, and it works perfectly with no problems. So anyway, guys, that's how you can have uh, wireless lights with your GoPro trail cams or your DSLR trail cams you aren't hindered by the cables that we used to have to string from our camera case to our light case you know uh, makes it uh, a lot easier to set things up out in the field without having to worry about all the cables thanks for watching